now it is time to move on to the next hot take, which is we need to begin the review of Attack of the Clone because we've talked about Phantom Menace and I like the Phantom Menace. And while I think it is a flawed film, I actually think it's way better than people give it credit. And if you don't believe me, you should go watch Phantom Menace for yourself. And I bet you're gonna have more fun than you think because there's a lot of really good stuff in Phantom Menace, even if there's some cringe throwaway lines. But we have to talk about Attack of the Clones, okay? And I know that I'm gonna make a lot of enemies when I say, Attack of the Clones? Oh my god. What is wrong with the cultural memory around Attack of the Clones? What is absolutely wrong with the cultural memory around Attack of the Clones? Just yesterday, I saw a viral post, people talking about, um, about Attack of the Clones, okay? And they were like, I'm glad that it's 2023 so that we can so that we can uh we can all admit that attack of the clones was a masterpiece oh my god no no it was not attack of the clones is without a doubt the worst film of the prequel trilogy no ifs ands and buts about it attack of the clones is is like it is so much worse than phantom menace it's not even funny oh my god Oh my dear God, there is so much. I was watching Attack of the Clones and I was just like, what is wrong? What was wrong with me? And I realized why I, why my memory of Attack of the Clones was, was so messed up. And you want to know what it was? It was because my child brain inserted gameplay from Star Wars Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2 into uh into what actually happened in the attack of the clones attack of the clones is it is it is probably the uh wor the second worst star wars movie like mainline star wars movie the only one worse than it is rise of skywalker and it is just yeah, literally, everybody misremembers what the Attack of the Clones is actually like. Attack of the Clones is a miserable slog. And guess what? Here's here's something else. It's worse than Phantom Menace in almost every single way. It has more stupid cutaway jokes. It has worse battle scenes. The CGI is terrible. The CGI in Attack of the Clones is it's so bad. And it came out after Phantom Menace. And what's even worse is that, unironically, the Attack of the Clones storyline makes no sense at all. It makes absolutely no sense. Uh, oh, oh my god, it's just, it's, it's so bad. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, it's just like... However, there is one thing from Attack of the Clones that I have to be thankful for, and that is... that it created this image right here, okay? Thank you to Attack of the Clones for creating one of the best image image of like uh, uh, uh image formats that has ever existed, okay? <laughs> it is it is it is one of the best meme formats and it also I will point out has had a very long life. This the Anakin Padme meme has been going strong for, when was the first one ever posted? Let's see. Uh, I guess it it's the, the, the first one took off this particular meme. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, so the origin of the film was in 2016, or the origin of the scene was in 2016, but the first meme like of that format was in 2021 and it's still going strong three years or two years well two full years in meme life is a pretty long one but i guess that the actual original edited version of the scene was in 2016 which is the earliest form of it according to this post pretty interesting
Wait, what's this one? Yeah, 2021. The first instance of the meme is this one. This was the first instance of that one. I'm going to change the world for the better, right? For the better, right? Okay. Attack of the Clones is a movie that starts boring, ends boring. Also, it is a movie that hurts all of the characters in every single way that you can imagine, okay? Let me just let me just talk about this. Everybody's saying that I need to say the line, but I actually have another line, okay? I no, there's a worse line, okay, everybody? And I need to do this, okay? I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to read you a line that is worse than the sand line, okay? Everybody thinks about, you know, I hate sand. It's coarse, it's rough, and it gets everywhere. Everybody hates that line. But there is a worse line in the movie that everybody forgets, okay? And I actually had to write it down because while I was watching the movie, it was so bad that I had to put it down in my notes, okay? And I'm going to read it to you right now, okay? It's a line from Yoda towards the end of Attack of the Clones, all right? Around the survivors, a perimeter, create! A line so bad, I cannot even believe that it was put to film. Around the survivors, a perimeter create. It is awful. It's so bad. It actually makes me laugh to remember that there is a scene with a crappy CGI Yoda saying, Around the survivors, a perimeter create. It's, it's so fucking bad it's so goddamn bad i literally started laughing out loud and immediately wrote it down on my on my phone because it was so stupid there are there are, there are a number of of rough yoda lines but that one is the worst line and it is so much worse than sand is rough and coarse and gets everywhere okay just oh my god it's so goofy it's so, it's so funny. I can't even believe that it's a real line. <laughs> okay, but, okay, but enough about that, okay? Um, the script of Attack of the Clones is painfully bad, okay? There are so many foolish decisions throughout Attack of the Clones. Every character is trying their hardest, and I mean it. Um, all of them, you can see that the actors are absolutely trying their hardest. Like uh, Hayden Christensen, Natalie Portman, Ewan McGregor, Ian McDermott, they are all doing their absolute best, okay? They're trying their hardest. Christopher Lee, but the lines that they are given to say are just, you. there's nothing to be done with them. All of the lines in the movie are just so odd and unrealistic and strange. And also... Let me talk about how the, the script and the plot for this movie just interact in the worst ways possible, okay? In the beginning of the film, we are made aware of a plot to assassinate, uh, 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 to assassinate Padme, okay? To assassinate Senator Amidala. Um, and this plot is a plot initiated by Darth Sidious. Darth Sidious tells uh, Count Dooku to kill Padme Amidala. So Darth Sidious tells Dooku, Dooku hires a bounty hunter named Jango Fett. Jango Fett then hires another bounty hunter. That bounty hunter then uses a droid, a droid which contains poisonous centipedes. That is the starting opening, uh, the, the inciting incident for the entire plot. It is, why? Why would they ever do that? And and then, and here's something that a lot of people overlook when they're talking about Attack of the Clones. Immediately, the so the first thing that we see is an argument between uh, Obi-Wan and Anakin. Oh, and this is another thing I need to say. Uh, Obi-Wan in this movie is terrible. Uh, I love Obi-Wan as a character. Obi-Wan is really cool in Phantom Menace and also he's a great character in Rise of in uh, in Re Revenge of the Sith. But Obi-Wan in Attack of the Clones was done so dirty by George Lucas. George Lucas wrote him to be nothing but a a complainer. All that he does is neg and be sarcastic. That is his only portrayed character trait through almost the entirety of 
uh, of Attack of the Clones with one exception, which a lot of people are already don't like for other reasons. Um, he And Ewan McGregor still does his best, but the lines that he is given is just to basically, to basically just be a complainer and a jerk the entire film. He is, he is so rude. He is always sarcastic. He is, uh, uh, and also he contradicts himself. Here's a great example. The, one of the first scenes of the movie, right? So, uh, Anakin and, uh, and Obi-Wan are having an argument about, uh, Anakin being impulsive and impatient. Okay. And then in the other room, uh, the, the little bugs come through the window and they're going to kill uh, uh, Senator Amidala. They're going to kill Padme, right? The bugs come in and then they go in and they're arguing about, oh yeah, the argument that they're having specifically is about whether or not it's the if they've been given the job of investigating. Anakin is arguing that it is implicit in the orders from the Jedi Council that they should be investigating who is trying to kill Padme. And Obi-Wan says, no, we are supposed to be bodyguards. We can't get distracted, okay? Obviously, Obi-Wan is kind of correct in that he's saying that it's more important to protect Padme's life than it is to try and figure out, like, uh, that, that other people are going to be working on that. But then... Immediately after they have this argument in which Anakin is saying we should we should go and investigate We should go catch the person who's doing this and Obi-Wan is arguing against that They run into the room they kill the bugs and for some reason Obi-Wan jumps out the window and grabs onto the drone even though he just got done scolding Anakin for um, For for being too impulsive and for wanting to disobey the orders of the council What? what, what in the first scene of the, the first major scene of the movie, they immediately undermine Obi-Wan's character. It, it makes no sense. Now, keep in mind that Obi-Wan is not like this through the rest of the series. Obi-Wan is always, he takes after Qui-Gon in a lot of ways. He's not impulsive. He's careful. He's arguably a little bit too careful and a little bit too trusting. That's one of Obi-Wan's faults is that he's like, he's def he's very defensive. And actually it's funny because even into the Star Wars games, uh, they talk about how like Obi-Wan is like an excellent defensive sword fighter. Like even in the games, they make references to him having like high defense points and stuff like that. It's just like, I don't know why they would ever do that. I don't know why they made that decision. And again, I like it just points out that as, that Attack of the Clones makes no sense whatsoever. It's just so many problems with the film. Um, and then there's, okay, so there's that. Let me talk about another thing that doesn't make any sense. That's a script problem, okay? Um, which is the love relationship between Anakin and Padme. The relationship between Anakin and Padme is the most unbelievable and unrealistic and poorly portrayed thing that you can possibly imagine. And it damages both Anakin and Padme's arc um, as characters. The first scene that we have with Anakin and Padme in private, Padme explicitly tells Anakin, stop looking at me hornily basically stop looking at me like i'm a sexual object and he says and he disobeys her she says you're make she explicitly says you are making me uncomfortable stop looking at me like that he disobeys her and just keeps staring at her like hornily and creepily and they just never revisit that the next major scene that like the next uh major part that they have together is basically them falling in love which basically means that either Padme is full of shit uh, or, and, and Anakin is way worse than he lets on. They just don't resolve it. They never resolve the fact that Padme explicitly says, like, Anakin, stop. Windleby says, I like the theory that Anakin used force powers to charm her. I like that theory as well. I wish they would have actually just written that into the script, but it's not in the script. There is no evidence that he's actually using the Force to charm her. It's only a fan theory. If that was written into the script, it would have made the movie so much better because it would have made the awkwardness work. It would have been basically like if an incel got the power to mind control women. 
it would have made it scarier, but also the problem is that it would have also jacked up the rating of the film for obvious reasons. Because if you have a guy mind controlling somebody to have sex with him, that obviously, that adds a pretty major uh, dark element, okay? Um, but also it would make it would also make Anakin an almost irredeemable character. And that's a pr another problem is that uh, it the the attack what happens in attack of the clones basically sets up Anakin to basically be an irredeemable character in throughout all of attack of the clones Anakin just keeps doing horrible things and I don't understand why they made that decision there are parts that are actually good for example this scene right here the scene, this scene where they're talking about politics in the grass and Naboo is actually a good scene. Um, it, it reveals something about Anakin that is not irredeemable. Uh, he's basically like, well, I think that they should, they should have a dictator, basically. He basically argues that there should be a dictator who's allowed to make unilateral decisions. And, it, and in the scene, even in the film, it comes off as like childlike naivety as opposed to like an irredeemable part of his personality. Um, and, uh, and of course, we're going to talk about Revenge of the Sith after this. In Revenge of the Sith, this is built on that he just has like a very childish view of politics throughout his entire life, um, and uh, like a childish and uh, and power centric uh, view of politics. But when you take it in context with everything else, it just seems like a self report. So like you have him explicitly violating. Uh, Padme's consent. You have him manipulating the situation so that he can get alone with Padme and then randomly, seemingly for no reason, Padme just goes along with it and really likes it. It's really weird. It, it, it's, it's, it's such a strange decision. Attack of the Clones is such a strange movie for that reason. And it makes a Anakin seem like an even worse person. Um, and... Uh, we're also going to talk about the Gendi Tar Tartakovsky uh, a, a Clone Wars uh, cartoon, which I think does a way better job of redeeming Anakin, of giving Anakin something redemptive. Um, but as far as what's depicted in the mainline films, Anakin just sucks. He's just a bad person. He does almost nothing good, and almost every moment that you're supposed to see, like, good in Anakin is underlined by him doing something heinous and terrible. Uh, it's, but they never say anything explicit, like he's using his force powers to manipulate her. Padme just ends up coming off as very stupid, even though she's supposed to be, she's a young queen, one of the most successful queens of Naboo and one of the most successful senators. She's supposed to be savvy and smart, and yet she just falls for this incel asshole who's constantly talking about Nazi crap. It makes no sense, and it sucks. I'm sorry, it's, 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 and that part is honestly more offensive than the sand line. Additionally, um, Additionally, when you take in context the later part in the film where he genocides a tribe of sand people, um, an entire tribe, not just the people who did him wrong, like he kills all of the women and children and she just kind of lets it go. It, and again, completely undermines Pad, Padme's, char Padme's character. Padme should have been like, what are you doing? That is insane. Padme's entire character is that she is a fighter. She is a, from in, in Phantom Menace, Padme puts herself in personal danger to save her people from genocide. Why would she ever be okay with him slaughtering women and children just because he's mad? I hate them. I hate all of them. It's terrible. Just why? Again, the the attack of the clones suffers from one of the worst scripts, of, uh, probably the second worst script in the entire Star Wars series. She's she literally she doesn't even have a reaction. Um, she she just kind of goes like, "What? You killed all those people?" And then they never talk about it again. 
which is just an absurd given her character. And this is, the, by the way, this is the reason why I keep harping on the fact that Attack of the Clones damages all of the characters. Let me give you another example of this. I'm just going to keep piling evidence onto the pile. Um, uh, 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 so, so uh, uh, there's a scene in the movie where, uh, where Obi-Wan is looking for the planet... Camino, which is where they're cloning all the clones and he's like he goes into the jedi archives and he's like i can't find the planet here there's a gravity well there but i can't find the planet and he he goes to consult master yoda and master yoda tells a literal baby like a not a baby okay i shouldn't say a literal baby a a a like a five or six year old child to tell him the answer and the child's just like they deleted the planet. They deleted the planet. And then Obi-Wan's just like, they can do that? They can delete the planet? Uh, wh why? It doesn't make Yoda look wise. It makes Yoda look like an asshole. It makes Obi-Wan look very dumb. Uh... <laughs> Is Palpatine's character hurt? Yes, because Palpatine tell because of the whole starting thing. Palpatine telling uh, Count Dooku to hire a bounty hunter who hires a bounty hunter who uses a droid which is full of bugs. Like Palpatine comes off as a as a total idiot. And what's even worse is that Count Dooku comes off as a total idiot. Oh no! Like I gotta talk about that too. Um. I got to talk about that too. Uh, at the end of the of Attack of the Clones, uh, there is this very strange sequence in which uh, uh, R two D oh yeah R two D two. Before I talk about this sequence, uh, R two D 2s character is damaged by this film as well. The scene that I'm about to talk about is a factory scene. It's like a slapstick action scene where they're sneaking in through a droid factory and a bunch of hijinks ensue. But at the beginning of the scene, R2-D2 and C-3PO uh, dis disobey orders to follow Anakin and Padme because they're worried about Anakin and Padme. And uh, C-3PO, who is an incomplete droid, he is not finished he's not been like completely finished yet and he is a a protocol droid he is only equipped to basically do servant tasks like serving food and talking to people and he, they're trying to get into the factory and and c-3po is like oh no i'm scared i can't it's too high i'll die if i fall down there and r2d2 just pushes him L literally just pushes him to his to presumably his death he explicitly says i i'm going to like i'll die if i i can't fly and r2d2 flies afterwards he pushes c3po who has no jump jets and no armor and nothing into immediate danger and then just takes off and flies afterwards literally just every single character is worse in attack of the clones for no real reason whatsoever why i uh, why i don't even know so after the uh frankly the like wasteful uh factory scene there is a uh they get captured so they go through the factory and padme anakin r2d2 and obi-wan have all been captured and um for some reason and this is where it hurts count dooku's character Count Dooku decides to execute them via gladiatorial combat and he calls literally millions of Geonosians or at least tens of thousands of Geonosians thousands upon thousands of droids into into one singular place into an arena and then they send three like untrained animals like they're literally like, um, you know, they've been like abused. They're like abused animals to go and attack them in an arena. And there's actually, it's so funny. In that scene, there is a line where one of the Trade Federation guys go, What's wrong with you? Shoot them! And Count Dooku says no. So, 
Count Dooku, he, he just lets three of the most powerful people in the galaxy. First of all, why would he be executing them in the first place makes no sense. They are very clearly high priority captives that would have given him an, an, an enormous bargaining chip, but he just chooses to not to, instead of, even though he chooses to execute them, which is stupid in the first place, he then also chooses to execute them via gladiatorial combat, which of course they escape and and immediately, almost like Deus Ex Machina, are are saved. I just I just don't get it. So okay, there's two more things I have to discuss about uh, in Attack of the Clones before I finish off my Attack of the Clones review. The first one is Dexter Jetster and the 1950s diner. Uh, everybody memes about Dexter Jetster and the 1950s diner in Attack of the Clones. Everybody, literally everybody talks about that scene. Uh, there is a scene in which, uh, as a part of the like arc of the story, Obi-Wan is investigating a mystery. And so as like a nod to noir films, he goes to a diner in Coruscant that is for some reason like 1950s themed. There's like a space jukebox. There's like a a, a, a lady in a 1950s, uh, uh, a, like a, what, what's it called? Like server, server, uh, server outfit. And then there's a guy named Dexter Jetster. Um, and I got to be real with you all. Everybody memes about this scene, but it's actually not as bad as everybody says. Um, it is silly. It's definitely quite silly, but it is a very, very short scene and it doesn't look as bad as people, uh, as like people say, uh, it's just, it's just silly. That's it. It's just silly. And it's literally like a two minute scene of, of Obi-Wan I actually kind of like the fact that he's friends with Dexter Jetster because it gives some depth to Obi-Wan's character. Um, oh, uh, in the in the Gendi Tar Tartakovsky uh, uh, animated series, one of the things that comes up is that uh, a couple of times is that Obi-Wan has traveled a lot because uh, when he was uh, when he was being trained by Qui-Gon, Qui-Gon specifically took him to travel around the galaxy and meet lots of people. And presumably he kept doing that after Qui-Gon died. Um, and that's why he has connections. So I actually kind of like that aspect of the scene, even though the fifties diner looks very silly. Uh, everybody memes on that scene, but what they should be memeing on is basically everything else about Attack of the Clones, because the Dexter Jetster scene is not as bad as people try to make it out to be. Everything else about Attack of the Clones, though, is pretty goddamn bad. That's basically my hot take. I know a lot of people were expecting me to really go hard on the 50s diner scene, but having watched it just a couple of days ago, it's not as bad as people remember. Uh, it's just, it's just kind of goofy. Yeah. It's just kind of silly and it's fine. It's not actually that bad. And now we come to the final thing that I have to talk about, about, uh, Attack of the Clones, which is, it's kind of a big topic. And that is CGI hell. Attack of the Clones has some of the worst looking CGI in the entire Star Wars universe. I'm talking all of the Star Wars films. It is just bad. It is, oh, oh no, it is so bad. Not only is it, is does the CGI not look good, um, but also they replaced tons of, in Phantom Menace, there were still a lot of, um, like actual costume work. There was a lot of outfits. There was a lot of uh, alien prosthetics. There was still a lot of uh, sets being built. There was basically nothing. Tatooine looks terrible in Attack of the Clones. It looks even worse than it did in Phantom Menace. And it's because it's all CGI and you can tell. Oh my goodness, you can tell. And one of the worst parts about... Um, about the CGI in Attack of the Clones is that 
I believe every single clone trooper is CGI'd. There is not a... I, when I was a kid, I felt like I remembered there being at least a couple of the, of the clone troopers who actually had uh, costumes, who actually had like armor, like prosthetic, like built armor, but they aren't. I don't think there's a single clone trooper outfit. They are all CGI and it looks very bad. And uh, continuing uh, into the, uh, continuing into the, um, the, the, <sighs> continuing into the CGI topic is the final battle of the, of the movie, which is very, very long. Um, the final sequence of the film is a, uh, a arena battle which turns into a giant Geonosis battle. There's the name of the planet is Geonosis. It's a big, like, uh, rocky, craggy planet with a ton of dro droids on it and a ton of clone troopers. Uh, and then, it, and then, and then it immediately weaves into a giant lightsaber battle. All of these are almost entirely done with CGI, and they look really bad. There is a C so. When I was younger, I, I I I mentioned this before that I I was surprised at how much I hated Attack of the Clones because I remembered the battle on Geonosis being really cool, and then I realized that I was supplementing my memories of Attack of the Clones with memories from the much cooler video games where they let you play the Battle of Geonosis. The Battle of Geonosis and Attack of the Clones is terrible it's terrible they don't there's almost no nitty-gritty battle shots at all it's all zoomed out you see a couple of like tiny looking little tanks a couple of tiny looking little ships and a bunch of copy pasted terrible cgi clone troops one of the only shots that's up close in the battle in the entire sequence on geonosis is covered in fake cgi dust i mean literally it's clone troopers and they're going hop 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 and they're jumping off and there's a bunch of cgi dust going like this to hide how bad it looks not even kidding you god it's so oh my god i wonder if i can get it i wonder if i can see if i can actually find the actual shot. Yes. This right here. It actually looks cooler in the in the screenshot because you can't see the dust in motion. This this we just watched this the other day when this is in motion, there is so much dust going all over the screen. It looks terrible. Oh, no, it's oh no. Oh, oh no. It's just, oh God. And that's, this is basically one of the only shots. You get two shots. You get this one. Oh, well, okay. Can we get the full version? You get this one and you get this one. These are the two up close and personal. You can't even see the droids. You don't even get to actually see any of the cool droids up close. You don't get to see any of the tanks. The rest is all super zoomed out panoramics of a battle that you can barely make out any details. And then it goes to the worst lightsaber fight in the entire in in the entire series. Uh hands down the worst lightsaber fight, which is the uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan versus Count Dooku and then followed up by Yoda versus Count Dooku. Looks terrible. You, oh my god, oh, it's so silly. God, it's so, so, so silly. There is, there's a part where, okay, so everybody talks about how silly it is that Yoda just like, he literally, he's like hobbling in, he's like, oh, okay. And then he throws his cane away and just starts doing triple backflips. I wish I could actually play it for you for how silly it is. However, I want to be fair here. And I want to say that given the direction that the entire series goes with force powers, I actually don't mind Flippy Yoda quite as much 
as I used to. I remember thinking that Flippy Yoda was incredibly, incredibly silly, but then I remember that they have Flippy Palpatine, Flippy Yoda, and Flippy Count Dooku. Uh, Yoda being like 900 years old, Count Dooku being like, at the time, his actor was like 80 or something, or almost 80. And then of course, Ian McDermott being in like his 70s, 60s or 70s at the time of the thing. They're all kind of silly. And I, and in retrospect, I'm just kind of like, you know what, whatever. They did some wacky things with the force. I do think it's still silly, but I don't think it deserves quite as much hate. What does deserve hate is, uh, what deserves hate is the, the choreography of the entire last bit, um, the entire lightsaber fight. Oh, and this, and the fact that the entire fight took place in darkness. They had it in, intentionally set in a dark room because you, you can tell that the CGI is so bad while they're flipping around that they needed to put it in the dark so that it didn't look as bad. They just fight in the dark, illuminated by their lightsabers. You can't see any details of the cool room they're supposed to be in. It's the opposite of the Darth Maul fight. The Darth Maul fight takes place in a really cool-looking set with a bunch of moving parts and obstacles. This one is a literal, they're fighting in a void with almost nothing in there except when they occasionally throw rocks at each other. They overuse their force powers, so it, it feels weird. They're just kind of going like this at each other. And that's it. And then there's a bunch of dumb, really badly choreographed lightsaber uh, uh, fights. And then uh, Anakin gets his arm cut off and passes out. But you see him, like, moving on the ground, but he never stands back up until conveniently the fight is over. Oh, also... <laughs> It's just, it, he's just laying there. You see him in the scene going like, ah, ah, but he just won't stand back up. The moment that they def that C Count Dooku escapes, he stands back up. But before that, he won't stand up. It's like a video game moment. It's like, it's so goofy. And, oh, but Obi-Wan does, does it too. Obi-Wan gets like force pushed into a wall and then he just lays on the ground next to Anakin, like writhing on the ground and doesn't get up until conveniently the literal second that Dooku leaves. They both stand up. He couldn't revive until combat ended. Literally, it's so goofy. It's so funny. I don't know why. I don't know. I don't. Oh, I just don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why they made any of the decisions that they made in this movie. Also, okay, one more thing. I said that was going to be the last thing I said about Attack of the Clones, but I have to say there's one part that's even funnier, okay? And it's right. It is literally right before the, the Dooku fight. So, um, right before the Dooku fight, um, Padme... Uh, Padme, Anakin, and Obi-Wan, and I think Commander Cody are, no, not Commander Cody, it's just a random, uh, it's just a random, uh, clone commander, are on one of those transport ships, and, um, they get shot at, because they're getting pursued, they get shot at by, uh, by Count Dooku's elite robot guards, okay, and, and Padme falls out and lands in the sand, but she's okay, so don't worry about it, um, and, uh, and they, they fly, they're avoiding the, the little elite guards and they land to let the Jedis get off. So you see Obi-Wan and Anakin jump off. Padme already fell out. And the literal second that they jump off and leave the landing pad, the clone trooper ship starts taking off and it immediately just blows up. The literal second they jump off, they're like, okay, thanks guys. And it goes, it just blows up and is immediately deleted. They're just like, yeah, whatever. Who cares? Let's keep going. It's so funny. It would be hilarious if it was in the, if it was in the Gendy Tartakovsky show, it would be really funny, but it's just unintentionally funny in the, in the movie. One of the funny scenes, I literally laughed out loud at that. Just, they're just like, they land, let them off. And they're like, and then they start running and it, goes, it just blows up and immediately disappears. So, so funny. Oh God. I love it. It's so good. It's so stupid. Oh, and then of course the worst fight in the entire thing. Uh, oh God. It's so goofy. 
Uh, yeah, they stopped having plot armor. That's the thing that hurts so much about uh, about Attack of the Clones. It's, yeah, it's a, uh, hold on, there's a, there's a scene, okay? I can show you a scene, hold on. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys a re real quick, I'm gonna show you guys a really funny scene from one of the Legos games, okay? This is from one of the Lego games, and I, I, and this is what could, that this movie could have been, okay? Here we go. You guys, you guys in the past, I never thought I'd make it to retirement, but here I am. <laughs> R2, locate the Chancellor. <laughs> They're literally eating the cake and drinking the juice. <laughs> it's so good. It's so goddamn good. Okay, th that could have been what the movie could have been. If they wanted to make it a sillier movie, they could have done that, okay? But they didn't. They just didn't. Look at this meme that I was just sent. I, Demon Mama, am going to give my spicy review of the prequel movies. You're going to roast them like everyone else has done, right? You didn't like them either, right? This is so good. What the hell? I love it. Oh, absolutely. The memes from this stream have been so good. There is, unfortunately, I lied once again. <laughs> once again, I have deceived you. Once again, Demon Mama has deceived the imps. Which is to say that there is actually one more thing that I have to talk about about Attack of the Clones before we move on to the next thing. Which is, in Attack of the Clones, something begins to happen that carries out all the way uh, to the rest, basically the rest of the Star Wars series. And it's one of the most unfortunate losses. Um, in, until Andor, really, I think, is probably where it starts to change a little bit. Um, in Attack of the Clones, it's the first time they start completely disregarding interstellar travel. Um, and, uh, and every single Star Wars media since uh, Attack of the Clones has essentially disregarded interstellar travel times um, in a really weird way. Uh, and, and, and it sucks, actually. So in The Phantom Menace, there is a scene where they are traveling from Naboo, which is a mid-rim, as far as I understand it, a mid-rim planet, to Tatooine, which is on the outer reaches of the outer rim. Tatooine is really, really far back out there. Um, and in attack in Phantom Menace, there's a scene where it becomes night. Basically, it becomes night on the ship, and Anakin is cold. And so Padme brings him a blanket so that he can be comfortable while they're waiting to travel the very long distance from Naboo all the way to Tatooine. Then, in uh, in uh, uh, in, in Attack of the Clones, they actually draw explicit attention to this. They're on Tatooine, um, and, and Padme says, Anakin, Geonosis is only one parsec away from Tatooine. We will get there way before the Jedi Council does. We have to go save Obi-Wan. And so uh, Anakin's like, okay, fine. And then they go to Geonosis. They travel from, from Outer Rim Planet to Outer Rim Planet. And in about 10 minutes, well, more like 15 minutes of screen time, but in real time, it's literally not that long. They sneak into a factory, they get captured, and they are about to be fed to monsters. And the, uh, and the entire Jedi Order arrives from Coruscant. So despite the fact that Padme explicitly calls out the fact that Tatooine is closer to Geonosis, um, the the Republic commandos and the and the uh, and the Jedi Order arrive only like twenty minutes or maybe at maximum a few hours later from Coruscant, 
which is the capital of the galaxy. Oh yeah, and they had to stop at Kamino to pick up the clones. And and it is very weird, okay? Because there is a lot of attention paid to travel time in Phantom Menace, and Padme literally calls attention to travel time only for them to immediately throw it out the window. And let me tell you, we are about to head into the review of Revenge of the Sith. And let me say, it does not get better. It, it gets, in fact, much, much, much worse in Revenge of the Sith. So, with that, let us conclude the review of Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones is a absolute bottom-tier Star Wars movie. It does damage to every single major character via the horrible script writing. And all of the... All of the amazing actors who were trying their hardest were given the worst lines to try and uh, and and deliver. Uh, and it is the laziest. It is one of the laziest of the films. It might actually even be more lazy than Rise of Skywalker. However, as you will discover when we do the review, uh, Rise of Skywalker is a a uh, a cinematic war crime. Uh, but we'll talk about that in the future. Um, now, so Attack of the Clones, terrible movie, uh, people, re uh, misremember Attack of the Clones, and part of the reason they misremember Attack of the Clones is because all of the following Star Wars media did a better job of making Attack of the Clones than anything else. The, the Battlefront games, all of the games set in the, in the Clone Wars era redeemed it. 